Corey, watching that, that film last night and seeing those 36 assists, the ball movement, but also the defense kind of come together. Is this one of the more complete games you guys have played in a while? Um, yeah, it's probably one of the best games we've played in a while. You know, we moved the ball. We had, like, like you said, 30-some assists. Uh, we played defense, and um, everybody played together, man. We were passing the ball and playing together. We're going to be really good. Luke was saying that you're one of the guys that's really helped make this jump for the Lakers to be such a better defensive team. But it's been more so than a practice and even in the games. What are you doing in practice to get these guys to play like that? Um, I just try to help them any way I can. You know, I show them what it takes to play defense. Um, I show them a little techniques, little things that young guys don't know. And, you know, they listen. And it's been working out for us. Anyone in particular that you've noticed from the young guys make a big jump since you first saw them this season? Um, Brandon's got a lot better since I first got here. And, uh, you know, I try to talk to him because he's skinny like me, so I, he's easy to tell he can do the little tricks I do. Um, Lonzo's got a lot better, you know. Um, he's getting better game by game. You know, he gets a lot of flag from people about this and that, but he's really getting better. How much pride do you take defensively? I mean, you look at the stat sheet, and people may not notice too many things, but we talked to Luke, and he's given you the credit for kind of anchoring this defensive effort. Um, I take a lot of pride in defense. You know, I've been known for a defender ever since I was in high school, so um, my high school coaches get on me. The only way I can play my freshman year is if I play defense, and it's stuck with me ever since. And I just try to tell these guys, if we play defense, we can win a lot of games, because we're going to score a lot of points, because everybody's talented offensively, but if we can get stops, we can really win. What's good, people? It's your man, Urban Love, reporting from the Mobile. You know how we do it. We gets down. We get busy for those Lakers. Check it out. <laughs> Had to clear my throat. Why? Because there's a woman watching me. How you doing, baby? You fine? I'm fine. Let's get together. Drink a little bit of wine. Anyway, got to talk to you later. Got to drop to my fans, my favorites, my lovers. Lovers. My, my lovable Lakers family. Anyway. We said earlier, well, I said before, and I know Mike from Lakers Talk, um, Dan, um, the Lakers fan, uh, um, Eddie Starr, a couple other guys probably had spoke on this before, but one thing we always said that the Lakers needed a leader. And I've been saying over and over again when Lou Walton said that Lou Aldane and uh, Moscow wasn't the type of leaders that the Lakers needed, only because these guys played particular roles and they didn't bring that, they didn't bring some sense of urgency to the team. And as you can see, you know, when they were there, you know, Miles, you know, it is what it is. And Lou Aldane, he riding on food stamps. Anyway, let's check this out. Now, Corey Brewer was asked, you know, about the defense and all that. Now, kudos to Corey Brewer. And like I said before, and I've been telling you guys over and over again that I love when Corey, they bring Corey Brewer in on defensive stop assignments. Like, his job is to go in there and stop whoever it is that they need to stop, which should be KCP's job as well. And I hope that Lou Walton eventually start letting KCP do exactly exa what Corey Brewer do. Only about Corey Brewer is that he brings a lot of defensive energy. Like, this guy doesn't give up on plays or anything. He doesn't give up. He might not be your best shooter, but you don't need everybody out there to shoot. The one thing about it, you just need somebody to go out there and just play straight-up defense who can knock down the shots when he's open, whatever. The guy got a quick, quick move to the basket. He does finish nice around the rim. But the best part I like about Corey Brewer is his defense. And they asked him about, you know, who's the best person that stood out to him the most from him talking to him about the defense. He said Brandon Ingram. This is why I say Brandon Ingram can play the two, only because if you look at it, Lonzo Ball, every game is getting better and better defensive-wise. The guy's like, I think, what, in the top five in blocks for a guard? Come on, we got to pay attention to that. So that's why I say, well, right now we got KCP. Okay, we're going to ride a KCP train for this year. But we got to start making making initial moves going into the next season. So with that being said, Corey Brewer is now, according to me, is that inspirational leader that we need. Somebody come off the bench, which Kobe could have did too when he was there. But, you know, Kobe is Kobe. I love Kobe. You know, he's you know he's enjoying his retirement life. I wish Kobe would have stayed a couple more years. He maybe he could have came off the bench, help out. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have to have that many minutes. But it is what it is. I'm not knocking my man Kobe. I know a lot of people would have different opinions about it. But I, I would love to see him come off that bench. Two years ago, I would love to come off that bench when we had D'Angelo and all the guys still, Nick and all of them. And he could have just helped them out. But... The funny thing about it is this, Corey Brewer is that inspirational leader when it comes to defense intensity. And he's basically been trying to teach the guys how to play defense um, and bring in that aspect that he learned, you know, because he said in, in the interview, he said, look, I couldn't get in the game if I didn't play defense. And he said, Alonzo, each game is getting better, you know, and, and the guys are watching, you know, and they're paying attention to detail. So it's a good thing to know that Corey Brewer is out there doing a the damn thing, helping the guys out with defense because defense bring offense. Now, the Lakers might not, you know, it, it, even though, Let's look at the, if you look at the Lakers' offense, right? Now, we know that the Lakers ain't got no shooters, but they are number one in the paint. 
That means they get a lot of points in the paint, which is good. And that's why I like, you know, you don't have to win games by shooting a three all day. And Luke Walton need to understand and realize this. You don't need about that shooting 10, 12 threes. Go to the basket, draw a foul. That's, a, that's more of a, a higher percentage shot than you shooting a three. Because when you go to the basket, and once you get a stamp on your name, you know, the ref's going to call them fouls. But you got to initiate the contact. Let them know that like, I'm getting fouled. So they can call a foul and you can go to the free throw line. But that's where the Lakers got to learn their free throws. Because if you're going to get to the foul line, you got to hit the free throws. So if the Lakers cut the free throws and they turn overs, the Lakers could win way more games than we noticed. But Corey Brewer, shout out to you, young brother. I'm glad you took the initial torch of being a defensive moniker for the players because they really need that. They need the ink of, of, of learning how to play defense. And once again, Lonzo Ball and Brandon will be a nice little uh, duo in that backcourt defensive-wise. Tell you guys, you're sleeping on them. They're young. They're still young. They're still learning. You know, Lonzo's his first year. Brandon Ingram, what, second, second year? Yeah, so second year. So they're learning. You know what I mean? So in, rea in reality, of it, as the years go on and the games go on, they're going to get better and better. Brandon Ingram, just, he's more of an unselfish player. He's not the person that's going to take over the scoring like he's like everybody expected him to be, but he's going to be an uh, 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 all-around type of player. You know, he's going to be able to score and play D. Kuzma's going to be the one that's going to be the score. Simple as that. But like I said, Corey Brewer, you, you shout to say you did the day go thing, man. Man, man, respect to you, man. I just hope that we can get rid of Lou Aldane. I hope that we can part ways with him somewhere, somehow, let the ocean open up and suck him in or whatever. And I'm just saying, I would never want the water to kill him, man. But anyway, I, I'd love to see it happen. Not, not, not uh, Lou Aldane. Lou Aldane, I just hope that you find another home. I just hope the Lakers don't be foolish to give up none of our young players in order to move your contract. If anything, I hope you and your agent get together and decide to go ahead and buy yourselves out so that we can go somewhere else, man. That'd be cool if you can buy yourself out. I know you really want to play, and I'm hoping that you get the chance to go play for a team that's like in the top five, like the Celtics or the Warriors um, or the Rockets. You know, um, you know, somebody that's actually, or San Antonio, somebody that actually have an opportunity to go to the uh, playoff and also be able to make the finals. i like to see you win a title, young man. You did a lot for the Chicago Bulls. I salute you for that, but the Lakers don't need you. And I know you feel the same way, like you riding the pine, you're not going to get no playing time. So it is what it is. But shout out to Coy Brewer. Hey, man, it's your man, Urban Love, reporting from the, uh, the uh, Urban Mobile. Um, hey, look, I got to get up with you. Bring right there, baby.